All right, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about this solar array that I put in my backyard. I have two 400 watt panels here. I have the panels mounted on a two axis tracker. The first axis is motorized and that tilts the panels east to west throughout the day. And the second axis is a manual adjustment that I adjust seasonally. High noon in the winter, the sun gets about 30 degrees at its highest point and 76 degrees in the summer. The adjustment is just loosening this pinch bolt at the bottom. I have the weight biased this way. And So this is where it might be in the summer and maybe four times a year, I'll adjust it. And right now we're in winter, so I'll just leave it at the lowest setting. If it could go lower, ideally it would be about 35 degrees, but 45 is as low as it goes. The motorized tilt only goes plus or minus 45. And I make sure to keep this fairly tight because if there's a strong wind, I don't want this lifting off. The construction of the weldman itself is really good. They have these nice bushings. Everything seems super heavy duty. Everything's labeled. I especially like these panel clamps. They're real easy to install. I'm not sure if you can tell in the video where the shadows are, but if I had the panel straight on the tracker, the corner would be shaded, so I have the panels mounted with a rotational offset on the tracker. This is the rotation I'm talking about. This piece is new, so normally this would be angled here, attached to these two screws. I'm using this 800 watt inverter from NEP, which is designed to mount under the solar panels on the roof. It has inputs for two solar panels, so in case one's shaded, the other will still be making full power. There's no DC wiring to deal with, it just plugs straight into the panels and outputs AC straight to the wall. It's UL listed and certified not to energize the grid if there's a power outage. As you'll hear in a second, this thing's really loud when it runs. And with the controller that came with the solar tracker, it was constantly moving for no reason. This gets quite annoying to listen to every 20 minutes. And for this reason, I decided to build my own solar tracking controller using an Arduino. I have two inputs here, the east and west solar sensor. And as I increase the pot, the value on the screen increases for west and same for east. And you'll see that bias is just reading the difference between those two. If the difference between the two is more than 100, this turns bold and when the timer expires, our motor will move and it's moving in the direction to make the bias zero or make these east and west sensors equal. If the sunny value drops below 500, it switches into a cloudy mode, which I'll talk more about later. Here's a time lapse showing just how hyperactive the old controller was. It was set to only move once every hour, but if it sensed it was cloudy, it would move to a flat position. It didn't know where flat was, so it would just have to retract the actuator until it hit the end of travel switch and then extend for another 20 seconds. And that would basically be flat, but it was all timer based. This constant moving back and forth was really getting annoying, especially on a bright sunny day with no clouds. There's just no way to tell the controller what is considered cloudy. This is a sensor that detects how bright the sun is coming from the east and from the west. I couldn't find any information on the solar sensor, so I decided to open the controller and try and reverse engineer the circuitry. The sensor connects to those five solder pads at the bottom and go through these resistors at the top. The sensor is supplied with 3.3 volts and the output of those sensors is pulled to ground through two 200 ohm resistors. So here we are outside. I have my Arduino and a waterproof housing along with the two relays that control the motor direction and my LCD. The LCD is displaying the readings from the solar sensor, the east and west measurements. And in addition to that, I have a third sensor for measuring tilt. 
The tilt sensor just has a ball inside that can that rolls back and forth, and if it's rolled to one side, it closes the switch. That way the controller knows the shortest path to being flat, and it doesn't have to fully extend and retract the motor. Right now we're in automatic mode. I'm going to switch it into manual mode, and the solar panel is going to want to move to a flat position until this tilt sensor changes state. So we're in manual mode, and it's going to move until that mercury switch triggers. And if the switch was already on because it was tilted left, it will, it knows to turn right until the switch turns off. So right now the east is reading 300 and the west is reading 950. And so the difference between the two, what I'm calling bias, is 600. So anytime the difference between east and west is more than 100, the panel is going to move to try and make that bias zero. So if I put us in automatic mode, because the west is shining brighter, it's going to try and move to the west once this timer expires. And now our bias is just about zero. Our timer has about 1800 seconds, and at that time it'll check the bias again and move the panel if it's needed. So right now I'm going to use my trusty hand to block the sensor and simulate that it's cloudy. So we're in automatic mode. Counting down, we're going to block the sensor real quick. So now we're in a cloudy condition. And it's going to park flat until that limit switch is made. And we're going to wait 1800 seconds until the next cycle starts. If I really block the sensor, if it gets below 50, it'll go from cloudy to just turning the display off completely. And that's so at night it's not so bright. And the display will turn back on once it gets above 100. Here we have five seconds left. We have a sunny sky, so it's going to track the sun again. For those interested, I'll try and run through the code real quick. This is all just variable declaration. This is all just initializing the I.O. This is kind of where the program starts. We're just reading our inputs, turning on an LED if we're in automatic mode. And if the level switch changes state, this level done bit will turn on. I have these sections compressed real quick. If we're not in automatic mode, do this. If we're in automatic mode, do that. This just turns the backlight on and off at night. Here I'll expand if tracking mode is off or we're in manual mode. As soon as the mode changes, just in case the motor was running, we want to stop it so we don't slam it in reverse. And we're going to display on the LCD that the mode has changed. If we get a command to level out and the level switch is on, we're going to move to the right. If the level switch was off, we're going to move to the left. If level done is 1, meaning the level sensor has changed state, we're going to stop the motor and display that we are parked. That's everything that's going on in manual mode, so I'm going to collapse that. And let's look at automatic mode, or when tracking is enabled. As soon as the mode is changed, we turn the motor off, just in case it was running, and we'll display that the mode was changed to automatic mode on the screen. We're copying the current milliseconds in the clock to a variable, so we know how much time has elapsed, and we know when the next cycle should start. We're counting down from 30 minutes, and when that timer is done, this T1 done turns true. T2 is a timeout timer that we run just in case there's a problem. We are not stuck in a state forever. We'll time out and reset after 30 seconds. When T1 timer is done and we start a new cycle, we're going to pick if we're going to be sunny or cloudy. We don't want the mode changing as the panel's moving mid-cycle. If it's sunny and bias is greater than 100, we're going to move west. And if it's sunny and bias is less than minus 100, we're going to move east. If it's cloudy and we were previously cloudy, that means we were already parked and there's no need to hunt for park position again. That would just be extra noise from the motor. If it's cloudy and the level switch was on, 
and we got a command to go level, we're going to move to the right. If the level switch was off and we get the command to start, we're going to move left. And if everything above is false, that means we've completed the cycle. I've collapsed the tracking enabled and disabled sections of code, and now I'm going to show you how I do the filtering for the analog inputs. I have this loop that's continually looping, and 90% of the time it's reading sensor values and calculating the average, and 10% of the time it's writing to the LCD screen. This is kind of time intensive, and I don't want to waste processing power on such a slow process. These last two lines tell me when the tracking mode and the tilt sensor have changed. This is a photo of the base of the solar tracker. I copied this into my CNC software so I could trace the whole pattern. I'm cutting this out and using it as a template to hold the bolts in the concrete while the concrete cures. I also scribed a line in the template showing where true south is in relation to our house. I spent a bit of time analyzing where the shadows are in our backyard and found the optimal spot to finally pour this concrete pier. In this time lapse, I have the panels mounted to the tracker with a rotational offset. You can see that it aligns with the shadows pretty well. For the pier, we dug a hole two feet down and filled it with concrete. We reinforced it with rebar and we're using a 12 inch cardboard tube as a concrete form. I finally got to press in my template that holds the bolts. I have a bunch of holes drilled through to let all the air bubbles out. And this definitely beats having to drill anchors into concrete. And I know for certain that this will fit perfectly. One last check to make sure we're level and that my scribed line is aligned with the house so that we're due south. I ran a flex conduit with a dedicated 240 volt line and a 12 volt line for the controls. This is the other side of the wall where that conduit goes in. I installed a Shelly energy monitor inside the junction box and I'm just using a 12 volt wall wart for the control power for the controller. I made this magnetic sundial that shows how well the solar tracker is tracking the sun. It hardly casts a shadow until the tracker reaches its end of travel. I let the concrete cure for a day and finally installed the tracker on its base. And with a helping hand, I loaded the two panels onto the tracker. Power from the solar inverter eventually ties into my electrical panel using a dedicated GFI circuit breaker. And at the same time, I added this Emporia View home energy monitor that monitors every circuit in the box. I wasn't sure if all this spaghetti was going to fit in the box, but I was able to trim all the cables and get everything to fit. Here's some of the data that I got from the app. It shows power throughout the day, the week, or the month. Here's a graph showing how the tracking panels compare to the static panels on our roof. In orange, we have our 3.8 kilowatt system just fixed to our roof, and the tracking panels in different locations of the yard are shown in blue and green. As you can see, we get more power under the curve throughout the day because the panels are tracking the sun. Here's a rough breakdown of cost. I didn't include the Arduino, which would be about another 50 bucks. So you might be wondering, why go through all this effort if we already have solar panels on our roof? Why don't we just add them to the roof and not deal with the solar tracker? Well, the answer is we're grandfathered into this net metering rate because we've had our solar installation for more than 10 years. Uh, so for 20 years, we're on this net metering 1.0, which means pg e pays us for our excess generation at the same rate that we buy energy at. If we added more than one kilowatt, which is considered their upgrade limit, that would bump us off that rate plan. And pg e won't buy our power back at all. We just give our excess for free. So all the new installations in California really require a battery to store your excess energy. That way you're not giving it away for free. And so that opens a whole can of worms. I wanted to maximize how much power we could produce with our 800 watt panel. By putting the panels on a tracker, we get a little bit more than what the nameplate rating is of the panel because the panels are tracking and they're more efficient. 
Overall, this project cost about $1,200 and it should save us $800 a year. So for me, it was worth having this kind of ugly contraption in the backyard to just be a little bit greener and not pay so much for electricity. We pay minimum 39 cents a kilowatt hour and the higher tiers are at 54 cents a kilowatt hour. So this has a pretty quick ROI of a year and a half. Well, if you've lasted this long, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll try and upload some of my Arduino code and some of the 3D prints and uh, drawings that I've put together uh, so that you can use them. I'll put a link in the description below. And uh, thanks again for watching.